What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today, Warhammer Chaos Bane. Some of my very favorite gaming experiences ever are usually involving couch co-op multiplayer. The stuff that allows you to just sit down with your buddies and take them along for a crazy ride. To have a chance to really experience an entire universe with the buddies to back you up. Now, that's part of the reason that I'll admit that I am a huge fanboy of the Diablo series. Each one of these manages to be so different and so fun, but simultaneously, they still have that same magic within them which is part of the reason that I got just pretty dang hyped when I heard that the next Warhammer game was going to be an RPG in the style of Diablo. Now, when you first drop into this, the thing that immediately struck me is that this manages to be unique and yet certainly follows in those Diablo footsteps. When you first turn it on, you get a chance to choose between four different heroes. A heavily armored soldier, a high elf mage, who is the guy I played as, an axe-swinging dwarf, and a woodland and Way Watcher, which is like your crowd control damage dealer who can also have minions, and this is who my fiance beat the game as. Now, as soon as we entered the world, we immediately got struck by the fact that this is something that tries to make it where every single character really manages to operate in completely their own fashion. Like my dude, I'm able to set the ground on fire and command the forces of electricity and ice, where she was able to summon all sorts of creatures to back her up and literally make plants bloom out of the ground to heal us and grab the feats of our enemies. This is a game that manages to make it where you feel like you're getting stronger as you progress, but more importantly, it is just fun to kill stuff. The story itself isn't super vital, but the basic gist is the fact that there was this ancient evil long ago that nearly managed to wipe out all of humanity. But some brave soldiers managed to show up, fight it off, and now it's slowly been regrowing in power. So it's our job to try and track it down and destroy it once and for all before it manages to get its absolute greatest might and obviously just destroy the entire universe. Pretty simple, right? Well, there is something about this that I did kind of enjoy, which is the fact that in the Warhammer, well, reality, basically the way it works is the bad guys are not necessarily just evil their chaos, their insanity. So a couple times during this, you talk to enemies and they're just bonkers. They're, they're purely wacky weirdos who are trying to collect skulls and drain blood and they just to give weird speeches about the great honor of dying for the greater evil. It's a nice little touch to make it where they kind of show the fact that these are not your typical mustache twirling master plan bad guys. They're just freaking crazy. And it makes it where whenever you're just mowing down hundreds of these guys, which you're going to do, you don't feel bad because you realize that these guys are just so freaking out of their brain, they probably don't even realize that they're being cut down by the thousands. Now let's talk about combat, because throughout a lot of these gameplay clips, what you're probably going to notice is the fact that we fight very, very differently in each section of the game. And it's because all of the combat very much centers itself around the abilities you equip, but you can really sort of customize how each ability works. Essentially, there is a talent system where you can choose which spells you do want, which spells you want to avoid, and which ones you want to power up. But all of it is heavily centered on a cost basis. Say like this right here, I have this really special ability that is Dragon Breath, and initially it's relatively weak. It does damage, but not like a million of it. But as I continue to go through the game and level up, I unlock additional tiers of it that are, of course, much stronger and basically unfurl the full strength of the dragon. However, there is a downside, which is this is going to cost me more talent points. So essentially, I end up having to make the choice of, do I want to try and downgrade my other skills to make this thing stronger, or do I want to make everything mid-tier? Like, I use this teleport ability a lot, and I can get an upgraded ability of that that'll let me actually teleport and explode wherever 
dry land. Do I want to get the strongest rank of that? Do I want to get the strongest rank of my energy ball that can actually leave a trail of fire behind it? You really need to try and judge what is and is not worth your talent points. Now this is actually pretty lenient because the deeper you go into the game, a lot of the main quests give you additional talent points as well. It's sort of the way the game makes you incrementally stronger for every major boss you manage to beat. Now I'm just going to say right up front, there isn't a bunch of enemy variety. You sort of find the same kind of weird monsters here, the same kind of weird guys that are sort of like naked dudes and speedos when you're out in the cold, and I don't know how these guys don't get frost bite on their dinglings or whatever, but the thing is that you'll notice that everything here is kind of samey, which does sort of bring me to the downside of this, which is that I do wish that they had more big bosses. When we were playing this and actually just going out there, blowing stuff up, having to call out targets and work together, it was very fun. But then, we kind of wanted this a little bit more variety. We wanted a little bit more to make it where things felt fresh again, because you do end up repeating maps occasionally. There will be situations where somebody will ask you to go into the forest and find like an ancient spell book. You'll bring that back, finish that quest, and then unfortunately sometimes the follow-up quest says, okay, now go to the other side of the forest to find this ancient fortress, which means that you're going to be playing through the entire level that you just played again, beating the forest a second time, and then ending inside the new area. It's a way that I think is probably trying to pad out the experience, but it does give you an opportunity to earn a lot more loot. Any dungeon crawler, one of the main aspects of it is the pure joy of just getting tons of items spewing out of everybody, and this game does that like crazy. Now, my fiance, she was playing as the archer, and we found her epic bows all over the place. For me, a lot of my stats were less important. Since I'm just using magical spells, as long as I was able to have enough strength to survive a couple hits and enough intellect to do some additional damage, it seemed like she was hitting harder than I was because for weapons and the just the item drops we got, but still, both of us were carrying hundreds of items sometimes, but they didn't really do anything. So wait, let me just say real quick, one of the weirdest aspects of this is that the gear is great, you're constantly getting new upgrades, you're constantly getting to compare the stats on different items, but a lot of it doesn't really have a point because the incremental upgrades feel very infinitesimal. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of times I found myself just trying to get the couple stats I liked, and then I sort of ignored gear. I got so strong about two-thirds of the way through the game that I pretty much just started putting on clothes to look cool, because it doesn't really matter if I'm doing 10 million damage or 10 million and one damage. And additionally, there is a little bit of a weird problem where uh, it's not one of those games where you can just collect spare loot to sell later because it seems like in this universe, gold does nothing. You find it all over the place. There is literally gold just spewing all over the ground sometimes, but picking it up doesn't really serve a super grand purpose because there are no shops. I mean, I beat the entire game and I never once managed to find a typical vendor. There is a guy that that I can trade gems into and there is like this place where I can make donations for reputation but there's never just a guy I can walk up to give money and get items instead the only use I really found for money was in the talent trees so one of the main aspects of this is the god abilities you get like special ultra spells late late in the game and these are all unlocked in a separate tree called the god tier this is basically like this game's equivalent of the Paragon system from Diablo 3, which essentially makes it where the more you play, the stronger you get. This creates things like more percentile of the damage, less resource cost, more movement speed, things like that that change fundamentally how your character operates and unlocks the very strongest spells in the game. You're going to be going into this tree and purchasing all these cool upgrades using the special fragment gems you find on the ground and also the gold, which is weird because I don't know if that means that I'm paying somebody to upgrade me or if this is just something where the money disintegrates. I had fun with this game, but I do think that it has some flaws that make it feel not quite as polished as I would like. It doesn't have the same replayability. It's one of those things that once you beat the last boss, you kind of put it down, but overall, it is still pretty dang great. 
Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's go to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Warhammer Chaos Bane an 8 out of 10. I really do still enjoy games that so predominantly highlight the fun of multiplayer, of getting a chance to just pick up a sword and a shield or some great magic and just mow down your enemies for hours and hours and hours with your friends. It's something that I feel like not enough games manage to really center themselves on today. Single player experiences are great, multiplayer competitively online is great, but sometimes I just want some couch co-op that way I can yell to my friends or yell to my fiance and have a blast. Thanks so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. You know what? Just for fun, let me give you a second opinion of my review. Let's go ask my fiance and see what she thinks about the game. Hey babe, what'd you think of Warhammer Chaos Bane? It was good. All right. All right, now back to that cat. <laughs> ah, awesome. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last, or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.